Hello and welcome to Old Scale Modeling. And welcome to this unboxing of this Trumpeter 172 scale landing craft air cushion, which basically means hovercraft. So let's have a look at what we've got here. Now, first of all, uh, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button below and then the notifications bell so you get notified of my videos when they're released. Um, at the end of the video or whenever you finish watching it, please make a comment, leave a comment down below. Uh, if you've built this before, uh, share your thoughts. If you had any issues, fit problems, uh, if it all went together perfectly, <laughs> I'd like to hear that too. Um, if you have any questions, um, just put them down below and of course give us the old thumbs up at the end okay let's get into this so uh, nice size box for this um, so from what I know it's a US craft they're kept on larger ships where they're run out from the back of these ships and come onto land and they bring troops, vehicles, whatever. If you ever get an opportunity to see a video of one of these things in action, it's quite an amazing sight. Uh, very noisy, so covert operations would not really work very well. But uh, yeah, very noisy. So let's have a look. Um, so on the side here, I'm looking here, we've got a couple of views. So we've got a front and rear view on here. We've got a bit of information about the ship, uh, the ship, the landing craft. Uh, this is uh, Japanese um, use this. And it says it's capable of landing directly from the mothership to the beach because it has a four foot clearance um, above the ground being a hovercraft which means that it can access 70% of the world's coastlines whereas conventional um, vehicles can only uh, access 17% so quite a, an advantage if you've got one of these uh, hidden inside your ship to offload so it can have a payload of up to 60 tonnes, which is quite a lot. And 4,000, and there are four 4,000 horsepower engines. Um, two of them used for the floating, the hovercraft underneath, and the other two are used for direction and, uh, pro and propelling the vehicle across the water. All right, uh, the other side has just pretty much nothing to see there. This one here, we've got one here that shows side views, left and right, and then a top-down view, looking at the deck area and the two superstructures on either side. All right, so, turn it around. Let's, uh, let's have a look inside. All right. So, first of all, we have instruction manual. Just put that aside for the moment. Here we have the uh, decal and color fallout sheet. So that's looking quite good, all the different parts there. Not too sure what that's about. Um, just a, oh, some more decal locations on the superstructure. That looks like probably areas that you can't see from these views. All right. Um, the color callouts show uh, paints by Mr. Hobby Balejo, Model Master Tamiya and Humble. I'm a Tamiya or Mr. Hobby person, so uh, that'd be my choice. But being this 
what it is. Uh, there's not a great deal of color differences. You got a few spots of red. There's tire black, which would obviously obviously be for the big rubber air cushion, I guess they call it. And then you've got different shades of grey, metal, metal black, silvers. There's a brown there and, and white, so not too complicated on the colours. The decals, well, look at the size of that. There's quite a large decal sheet there. Let's have a look at how vibrant the colours are and of these decals. Uh, so. All right, protective zipper on the top, and oh, what do we got here? It's interesting. I don't know what's happened there. That looks like Japanese. It was Japanese flag. Okay, let me just cut this tape here so we can look in here. So there's our decals. They all look quite good. All fine. Until I can just make these out as being Japanese flags. We'll closely that focus in. See? I don't know if they've been deliberately they do look like they've been deliberately crossed out. That's unusual. And I noticed that there's some markings on this paper over the top where they were. See the yellow? A bit of... That's sat over the top. Which is strange. So we don't have any Japanese flags for it. Interesting. Okay. If you, if you, if you have this kit, um, did you have this? Happen on your decals? Were, were that really does look like they've deliberately crossed them out as if they don't want you to use them. I mean, there's no option of putting a US flag on them on it. And I'm pretty sure from the picture, let's have a look on here. Just looking briefly on here, I don't see a location for those flags. Hmm. Anyway, what, give me a, let me know in the comments below if you've come across that, if you have this model. All right, so what do we got? That's for the decals. I better put that back in the plastic, keep that protected. In fact, we'll just put that aside there for now. Okay, so we have lots of bags. Lots of plastic here. And we're going to go through all of these and have a look at see what the detail like is like and uh, how a trumpeter fared in their quality, which I think is quite usually quite good. All right. Uh, let me just get myself sorted here and we'll... We'll get these out of the sprue. There's more, there's a lot more stuff underneath here too. In fact, let me do this. Out of the way. Out of the way. That's a plastic. All right, there's some clear parts in there. Looks like a, a screen there, probably for the I don't know if you call it the cockpit or the bridge on something that sort of semi flies on the water. Yeah. Anyway. Um, now, first of all, what I'm noticing in here is I don't know how old this kit is, but this has probably been sitting around for a while because I'm looking at, I don't know if it's mold. Or something on there. I don't even know what that is. But in here, look at the discoloration. Can you see that on the white? 
or yellowing. And I'm sure that's an age thing. Let's hope it hasn't had any effect on anything. So that is our decals. So we just have a close look. Fortunately, everything's in plastic. So that's protected things a bit. Um, I am noticing some marks on the plastic bags themselves. But as for this, the metal sprue itself, um, for the photo etch, uh, that all looks fine. It really does look fine. It's really good, actually. We'll, we'll come back and see that. Um, here is the actual air cushion. It's, it's protected under this plastic here. Like that. So... It is rubber. Yeah. Real rubber. That I'm not gonna take this out. But I can Yeah. It looks in good condition. That's there's no mold or anything on that, no marks. That looks really nice. Um I'm assuming you won't have to paint that. Looks quite good. Put that back on. Um, we have another box here. Let me just move this one out of the way. This box, it's a bit of weight. Ah, okay. Just get the light back here. Bring the camera down a little bit. All right. So this looks like the deck, maybe? Oh yes, look at that. Is that one piece? I think that comes off. Okay, first of all, what I'm noticing here, there's a bit of yellowing. You see that on the edge there? You feel that there, so it's a bit of yellowing there. But that's okay, I think. <laughs> so. That comes off. Uh, this is quite a solid piece of plastic here. Now I'm, I'm guessing that's going to be going inside the air cushion, or partly under the air cushion. And then there's our deck. Um, deck looks really nice. It's going to need a clean. You can see that. It's got a few marks in it, but it looks fine. Um, nothing that a good uh, clean won't hurt, just some warm soapy water. So I'm going to put that back in there, try and fit that back as it was. It's got some mounting points under there. That's it. That back in there. So it's well packaged, that's for sure. Certainly well packaged. Now, that back in the box. Sorry. There. All right. Now let's start on the screws and have a look. So first of all, we've got the clear one. Have a quick look at that. I won't open that because some really, really tiny pieces in there. Um, they look all right. That windscreen on there looks really nice too. I don't see any scratches or anything in that, so that's good. We'll keep it that way by keeping them in the plastic. Now, we also have this one. Now, I don't know what part that is. Oh, that looks like one of the uh, the bridge area or where they drive from because that's where that windscreen would fit in. Um, so that's okay. 
I'm guessing that would be part of that area as well being on the same sprue. Because again, there's some very small pieces in here, but everything's intact. So that's that's very good. No loose pieces floating around. Put that aside. Um, bigger one here. This looks like it has the uh, the fans for the back and the shroud for the fan. Looks like some more. Um, there's propellers, I guess you would call them. Yeah. Not sure what those are. Brackets of some sort. But it seems there's two sprues in here with the same thing in each, so it's probably all engine parts, one for each side. My guess. The other sprue here has a structure on which I'm not sure what that is. It's like a couple of large doors possibly on the side of it. This looks like uh, probably the bit that folds down when the vehicle's up on the beach. I would say that's probably what those are. There's looks like some railing and there's definitely a broken piece in there. So you can see uh, in there that that's come apart. That's no, not a big deal, only because I can see the other side and it's not broken. But again, this is why I don't want to take things out of the plastic if I can help it. Uh, here we have, looks like lots of bits of the superstructure and the detail in that looks quite good. Um, yeah, you can see the walls, all the panelling. Looks really nice. Uh, oh, good. Uh, it's not over yet. We've got more. So there's lots of little parts here. I can see lots of what looks like either piping or aerials. Um, maybe even handrails of some sort, some very tiny parts there. Um, some more look like maybe they're, I'm only guessing, maybe windows, not too sure. Some of these parts in detail, if that's like a, a dash of some sort, control panel, you're going to be able to see that. Yeah, there it is. It's got some detail in there. Control panel. That's good. And the last bag of plastic is this one. But we've got some exhaust, I would think. Exhaust funnels there. Um, railings. This looks like railings here. Yeah, lots of interesting stuff on that that may even be a stair a stairway going up somewhere onto another level or to a doorway that's good so I'll um I'll just uh, put all these back safely in the box and we'll come back and have a look at the manual okay back in a second Okay, so welcome back. So let's have a look at the manual here. Um, so first we've got just a few little symbols that we're aware of through the manual and know what they mean, like not to cement, decals, uh, file or sand, so forth. Uh, there's a bit of information there on decal application. Open the first page and we have the deck and the lower hull. Okay, uh, this is the rubber inflated, uh, I've called it the right name before, now I can't think what it is. Um, yeah, inflatable underneath. <laughs> um, screws are labelled by their letters. So we've already looked through them. And while I'm just looking here, there's our photo etch one, which we didn't really look at properly, but there's a photo etch. And it's basically all grills. So all the grills 
that are going to be on vents and so forth throughout the throughout it is covered by uh, photo etch. So that's a nice nice touch. Um, yeah. I just noticed on the decal sheet here. You go down, and have a closer look. You'll see that those bits, the flags, are also crossed out here on the printing of the decal sheet. So obviously it's not a mistake or anything like that. That's the way it's supposed to be. I don't. That's strange. Why? I mean, they were Japanese flags in there. So why they don't want you putting on the Japanese flag? Don't understand that. Anyway, moving on. Right, so for the construction of this, it looks like we begin with the hull, which gets connected to the deck. And then there's a couple of little, little pieces at each end there where you drive on and off the deck. There's those pieces that I thought were ramps, and they are. There's for each end. Obviously, there's different lengths. Um, and then all that goes down. It looks like on top of the inflatable, there's the word, the inflatable um, bag of the hovercraft. Step two. Step three and four, a little make two of each. No idea what they are. Um, but anyway, there's some pieces in here that are optional. But otherwise, it's just basic, pretty much just going to be putting stuff down. So I would probably think that you'd want to paint and prepare that uh, deck area, uh, this, before you attach it to anything. Uh, yeah, so that's obviously the underside of it, and that you turn it over, and that was underneath, and then there's that. And then it looks like under there goes your rubber inflatable, you attach under that. So it makes sense when you look at it spend a bit of time right and this is it i've just opened the box i've not looked in here at all we're seeing it as i'm seeing it <laughs> so we've got more bits and pieces going on here uh more little bits there's some photo etch going on already or well, actually there was photo etch going on back here too uh more pieces going on the side here all right now we've got some structures going on going together with lots and lots of pieces to go on them doors to go on ladders to go on roof to go on there there's the vents wherever they came out of aerials again photo which scattered through there's lots of vents basically there's so many engines there'd be vents everywhere uh, air intakes and so forth. We need all that. Those brackets I saw on the sprue, they go in there as like supports inside. We've got more photo etches going, etch going on here. So it looks like you build up all these sub assemblies all individually. And yes, that's what I thought. So they all come together. Um, into each piece and then step 22 is you just place them all in their position and for some reason we seem to be getting one page to go uh -huh, okay right so it doesn't seem like much but there's a lot of build two of everything because we've got one side as these structures and then this side has separate structures, um, which are all going to get placed on individually. So that'll make it easier for the detailing and, and the painting. Uh, so there's that side going on. There's the cockpit bridge, whatever you want to call it. I can see it with the windscreen wipers on there. So that's where it's driven from. Um, 
Yeah. And still, right up to the last step 24, we're still putting in photo etch and uh, little pieces on there. So it looks like an interesting build. And, you know, it, you could detail up this really well, I think, and weathering it would be fantastic. I mean, you could you can imagine most of this is all silver, grey, uh, and metal. So you'd have, you know, rust stains. You'd have um, water stains everywhere that's coming down the sides of all the machinery panels. Now I'm just looking at here, and I noticed also something interesting uh, on the front here. Do you see it there? So they've blacked out the Japanese flag on there as well. How about that? You know, that I don't understand. I mean, if, if I've got a Japanese flag decal somewhere, I'll put it on. <laughs> I mean, gosh, you know. Anyway, we won't go into controversial issues. Um, because now that I've Look, I thought. Geez, I just thought to myself, do you think they've done it on the front of the box itself? And sure enough, there it is. Blacked it out, in Japanese. All right. So, if you've got any comments about that, <laughs> yeah, freely comment below. I don't understand why that would be the case that they've done that. Okay. All right. Well. What do you think of that? I think that's going to be a great little build. Um, I don't know when I'm going to get around to it. I've got quite a lineup coming up. It's along the same theme of my Oscar modeling channel, which is building ships and uh, watercraft boats. You know, I've, I've gone from warships to cruise ocean liners to I think you'll even go back there and you'll see a uh, a helicopter, because it was a helicopter gunship. Hey, gunship, ship. Anyway, that's off the subject. So there we go. There's our unboxing of the JMSDF landing craft air cushion slash hovercraft. Um, I'm looking forward to building it. I'd like to hear from anybody else who has built it. Give me some tips and ideas and throw in anything you know about that flag decal. I have heard there may be some fitting issues with the rubber inflatable around the bottom, um, but I'll deal with that when I come to it. Okay, so it was a thank you for watching, and please, uh, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, Go back and watch uh, all my other unboxings and all my other videos. There's quite a lot there. I mean, it's, you know, for those who don't know me, I'm a beginner. I've only been building models for the last 12 months. Actually, a little bit more than 12 months now as 2022 is coming around. But you might be quite surprised at what I've been able to do, as most people tell me. <laughs> um, and... Uh, it's my perspective of, you know, don't be afraid to jump in and give it a shot, you know. Um, some of these look quite complicated, um, but, you know, you take your time, you organise yourself and you get everything laid out. Uh, these builds are really good. They're really good. All right. So, like I said, subscribe, comment, give us a thumbs up. And uh, I'll, I'll see you in the next video, hopefully. All right, bye for now. Cheers.